Good morning. <clears throat> I'm going to make a disclaimer again that um, I am not a teacher. Uh, I am just someone who shares their own testimony that rather than coming up against my testimony um, take the seed that I've planted directly to the Lord Jesus Christ and pray about it that um, again this is just my testimony and if you come up against my testimony that's your testimony so be very careful instead of being impulsive and thinking you know what's what just be very careful that have a healthy fear um, uh, before you act upon um, your own feelings about a situation. I'm just being loving by just giving that warning. <laughs> okay. Um, by the way, I pray to be humble every single day. Uh, when I've given my testimony and said that the Lord has delivered me like uh, from so many things I can't even, um, I couldn't even number the amount of things that he delivered me from like immediately, like alcohol, fornicating, adultery. I was delivered immediately uh, when I became born again in the spirit. Uh, it was like cold turkey. <laughs> Yeah, but there were some things, admittedly, I wasn't delivered from uh, prideful uh, behavior immediately. I wasn't delivered immediately from that. That if, if you were to go back the first few months of my walk, if you even care to, um, my whole testimony is on this channel, you know, in different videos, that you could see pride rearing its ugly head in some of the videos that I had in the beginning of my walk. I was a little bit too confident, a little bit too arrogant. You notice the, you can be too something, T-O-O. But you can't be too humble. That's impossible to be too humble. So, as my walk progressed with the Lord, you know, I was learning, learning to be humble. He was showing me different areas that... Um, you know, it's one thing to be confident when you're speaking truth. It's another to be leaning on yourself and your understanding. <laughs> so, you know, that was something that I had to learn. Again, this is why I pray to be humble daily. So... With that disclaimer, be very careful, be cautious. It's better to be safe than sorry. So today I want to talk about um, Acts chapter 17 and 18. I want to talk about a, a couple of scriptures and kind of connect it together. So... Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. But here's the interesting thing. The next scripture 18 says, And on my servants and my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So, 
Do you notice how the Lord in this, these two scriptures, he distinctly separated, I shall pour out my spirit on all, on everyone. Okay, so, and then I also should pour out my spirit on my servants. He distinctly separated the two for a reason that not everyone who dreams a dream and has a vision that's from the Lord is walking with the Lord. Okay, not everyone is his servant. Okay, they're serving him by, you know, um, sharing that dream or vision at that moment but it doesn't mean they're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. I know there's a lot of people who they think that they've had rapture dreams and you know they may not necessarily necessarily claim to be a prophet but they claim to walk with Christ which is not always the case actually in most cases they're not walking with him because they don't have his Holy Spirit Pouring out the spirit of truth it doesn't mean that just because someone, just because he's had mercy on most people and love for them, warning them, that dream warning someone is to get that person in gear, to light a fire underneath them, to seek the Lord, to seek truth. And you know, again, most people, I'm not saying ignore it, but they don't take the warning seriously because they don't make sure that they're actually born again in the spirit. They don't come out of the world. They don't come away from the world. You know, they don't stop sinning willfully. So, uh, a lot of people who think that they have rapture dreams are actually having dreams of his second coming. When they say that they see the Lord in the clouds coming, that's, that's the end of tribulation. When Jesus Christ comes back with 144,000 um, at the end of tribulation. So that's an indication, they are warning dream, that you were in tribulation. That that could possibly be your future if you don't take this seriously. So, again, he is merciful. He's pouring out his spirit. Just because you have a dream or vision doesn't necessarily mean you're walking with the Lord. Okay? So, um, John 14, 12 says... Um, verily, verily, he's speaking to his disciples. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the, my Father. So, there are many people that look at that scripture saying that we'll do greater works than the Lord did when he was here. They look at it, you know, you see these um, people who go around laying hands on other people, healing them, I guess, or, you know, you see people who um, think that Everyone who has his Holy Spirit speaks in tongues, just like they think that everyone can heal. They have the, the ability to heal. You don't choose the gifts that the Lord blesses you with. I don't, I, I don't lay hands on people and heal people, and I don't speak in tongues. That doesn't mean I don't have his Holy Spirit. The Lord's gifted me with wisdom and understanding. So when I, I remember the beginning of my walk when I came across a video, Sid Roth, Supernatural, something or other. And in this particular 
video it was about teaching people how to speak in tongues and they were encouraging the audience to just make random sounds <laughs> Shava ba 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 ba. <laughs> and uh, because they were saying that you can be taught to speak in tongues, no, you cannot. You cannot be taught. Not and just because you have a Holy Spirit doesn't mean you have the gift of tongues. It's not even what people think it is. Uh, you can't choose your gifts. Okay. So the greater works that um, the Lord is talking about is that in, in the last days, the last generation, okay, that we will know that we are the last generation. Okay, we will know it. You just know it in your heart. You, you know that we're so close and that we are the generation. That we have knowledge that the disciples didn't have um, back then. And I will reference Matthew 24. Um, Matthew 24, verse 37 through 39. Um, it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day of Noah, that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Um, that wasn't the actual scripture I wanted to read. <laughs> but I mean, that that's still on point. Okay. Um, this scripture, I think, is interesting when people think of um, marrying and giving into marriage as the days of Noah were. There was transgender, people transgendering themselves back then okay that people were people were believing in alchemy which is um uh satanic where they follow their god little g the baphomet which is male and female and um that uh in alchemy the belief of a marriage between a man and a woman is not traditionally like, you know, a man and a woman, two separate people getting married. They believe that if they become both male and female, transgendering themselves, they become their own gods. So that was happening back in the days of Noah. There's nothing new under the sun, basically. Nothing new under the sun. Um, in... Uh, Leviticus 18.21 and Jeremiah 19.5, it talks about um, people putting their children through the fire, the fire of Molech, I think it was, where people think that they were just throwing the whole child into the fire as a sacrifice. No, that actually means transgendering, castrating their children to bail. So again, nothing new under the sun. Um, in Kings, is it Kings? No. Numbers. Um, the story of Samuel. Uh, not Samuel. <laughs> not a teacher the story of Samson and Delilah um, I believe Delilah was transgender she was of the Philistines which you know Samson's parents were like well aren't there aren't there any women that you desire 
uh, among your own people? Why do you have to go over to, you know, the, the Philistines who were, were not of the Lord God? Um, I believe Delilah was transgender um, and MTF. Obviously, you can't say that for sure, but um, it wasn't pleasing to the Lord when Samson was with Delilah and um, you know he fell for he was beguiled by her and um, and you know you know the story so the scripture that I actually wanted to share and I must not have written it down maybe it's in John is when Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said that there are things that I would like to tell you, but that but you just can't bear or bear either bear to hear them or maybe he thought that they just wouldn't understand. And an example that I wanted to use was, you know, what if Jesus said to his disciples that, you know, when they were asking about the end days, and how will we know? If he said to the disciples, in those days, in that generation, with those people, you know, they're like uh, three quarters of the people will have a black mirror, a small black mirror, a vanity mirror that gives them an unlimited amount of information your cell phone right that um, they'll be addicted to this vanity mirror and they will believe the lies that um, they're being fed from from that mirror now the disciples back then wouldn't they would be like, what? How could that happen? <laughs> you know, but because uh, they wouldn't understand. They wouldn't understand about, you know, here in 2020, you know, three quarters of the population have a cell phone that they're addicted to, uh, that they have social media accounts, taking selfies, they're getting their information, their news feed on these social accounts and most of the stuff that's on there, there's really no truth in it. Uh, it's all fictional, it's all a stage. But if you told the disciples back then, they wouldn't have understood. Um, so the greater works that the Lord was talking about was we have knowledge that they did not have. We, we know things that, that the disciples um, didn't, they weren't aware of. So greater works is that the key of David, it's the key of David, right? That we the the scrolls were opened that we know truth that the holy spirit's pouring upon us now that we know things we understand scripture um the way people over the years you know the generations before didn't have an understanding because the lord didn't allow the scrolls to be open until now for I don't know how long I don't know how long the scrolls have been open for I've only been born again since December 7th uh, 2018 but um, say the scrolls were opened in 2008 where there was only an understanding since then you know, of, of different revelations of scripture that the last generation has received. So that's the greater works that's being talked about. It's not that 
all of us have the ability to lay hands on people and heal and all of us have the ability to to speak in tongues and all of us have the ability to prophesy that's not what it means okay so be very careful of falling for those who because they have dreams they believe that they're prophets they believe that these dreams are from the lord and not every dream is from the lord um and you know that's why it's it's important to test all spirits always test all spirits always so I hope this wasn't all over the place. It seems like I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was going to be, but I think it has important information, a seed that you can take directly to the Lord and, and have him water it. Again, I'm not a teacher. I'm just sharing my own testimony. Okay, I love you. I hope everyone's having a great week and God bless.